Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines, and this is I Am Loved Church. Good morning. It's Saturday, and I'm going to post this video hopefully by Sunday morning, which is tomorrow. Everything you hear today is already pre recorded, pre filmed. And you're going to be hearing this on the day of Sunday. So with that being said, it basically what I'm trying to get at is God can use a sermon anytime, anywhere. I'm looking at a really beautiful, this is just so amazing, the clouds and all that stuff. It's raining a little bit. I, hopefully I don't get much wind in my recording. <clears throat> it just came from Bible study. It was just so amazing, so spirit-filled and fed. <sighs> so I Am Love Church is growing very slowly. I'm not too sure who's watching these things, but we're still getting people to watch them or people are watching them. Regardless of the point, if people are watching them, that means we're on the right path. And I believe that we're on the right path regardless. Uh, man, I wish you can just take a look at this right now. I'm not going to stop the video. This is more important. God's word does not return void. I was praying uh, fervently, intensely, deeply, uh, yearningly, to the Lord and just praying that he would just show me a sign. I know New Testament says an evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, but I was praying that God would direct my path and that I wouldn't direct my own path. Today I woke up and he said to me, it doesn't start with you. It starts with me. What that means is life doesn't begin with our choices even though we make them, even though they could be in the wrong direction of God or not biblical at all, but life begins with Jesus. Our faith starts and ends with Jesus. There's some scripture about that if you know your word, the word, his word. Uh, life is good when you know Jesus, even if in the seasons of what is happening isn't playing out the way we want it to play out. It's still playing out the way God wants it to play out. He knew this before he created anything, even before Satan had fell from heaven, he knew that he was going to fall. So matter, no matter what you're facing, God already pre knew that that was going to happen as it happens, as it happened, and as it will happen, his word does not return void. It's the same, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, the same as the Lord Jesus that we believe in. Um, so with that being said, to those of us who find and should find peace in him when we know that truth, when we believe in that truth, and if we don't, then we're not living in truth. We're not living in his covenant. We are not connected to the vine as he describes himself. I do these videos like this. They're not premeditated on. I didn't have a pre um, sermon and I don't, I'm not speaking bad about sermons. Actually, I wanted to tell you guys that um, the Lord is impressed on my heart to start doing sermons as a way of not just what I'm doing right now but as uh, scripturally to explain um, scripture, to create seasons and um, to explain those seasons and to, to, uh, to lead, to lead you, the audience, you, the followers of Jesus into the covenant, whether you don't have a relationship with Jesus or into deeper intimacy with God. Uh, I can't tell you when that's going to happen. I've just 
felt inspired to do so. Um, this is all new to me, um, but I'm very excited. I'm excited what God has in store for us. Uh, of course, myself as well, but it's also scary. It comes with new challenges and responsibilities. Um, these sermons like this that aren't, you know, me hold, having a Bible right in front of me or a pre-written sheet of things I'm going to say, which can still speak truth, are, are, are a personal sort of sermon. This is, these sermons I've been doing are personal, meaning it's just whatever flows, whatever the Holy Spirit wants to say, I'm going to say it. So it could speak to you. I'm hoping that it, it speaks to everyone who's listening to and I'm and I'm I am believing that it does. You know. <clears throat> so one minute I'm talking about what the title of the sermon is, and the next moment I'm talking about this, which doesn't have anything to do with the title. And I'm just allowing the Holy Spirit to use me. But I am going to start doing actual sermons, whether they're pre-written or whether they're just having a Bible open, going down um, sentence to sen sentence by sentence. And, uh, yeah, I just want to let you guys know in advance that uh, these are going to continue. I'm going to continue to do these sermons, which is just to just talk and let the Holy Spirit use me. But I'm also going to just be, I'm also not just be. See, I'm messing this up. <laughs> oh, man, I'm worried about the weather right now. And I'm like, it's like really cloudy. And then there's like neighbor out doing some stuff, which they're never really out there doing stuff. And it's really hard because it's like I'm on coffee right now. And I'm hype at the same time. And I'm my mind and my thoughts are very distracted by many things. I'm like, what should I say? How should I say it? So, but that's okay, because God can still use my flaws, the things that I find flawful, or not you know, perfect or, you know, whatever, uh, living up to my own standards or society's standards. And God can still use that. And I, and, and it takes faith to believe that God can use our mistakes. If we're willing to allow him to, to believe, I'm still going to post this video, even though I'm making a crap load of mistakes, somebody may look at it and be like, it was the most convicting or, um, spirit filled video I've ever watched. And I think that's just part of our human nature is to think that God, um, that we're, you know, constantly making mistakes. But it's also a test of faith. You know, many times we enter into relationships or into conversations where we feel like it's awkward to do or not to do certain things. And, and given that there are sinful things that we can do, uh, just to believe that even you know, Jesus despised all, all shame when they tried to shame him by crucifying him on the cross. He despised it, meaning he didn't allow it to affect his being, what people thought about him. You know, and God doesn't want you to let people's opinion of you define who you are. And this is a test of faith. I mean, there are many passages throughout the Bible um, in the New Testament as well, where Jesus is calling out anyone to, who believes in him to have the faith to stand out and and to proclaim his name, to simply proclaim his name. Some of you guys don't even proclaim his name in front of your friends or your family. You're scared to say the name of Jesus around people who know, you know or probably believe that are non-believers. Or, you know, and it's, or even to say, God bless you. People in this society today are afraid to even proclaim their faith. And Jesus says, if you're ashamed of me on this earth right now, not just including on the day of revelation or day of judgment to come, then I will be ashamed of you. Jesus doesn't want his people to be ashamed. Proclaim it. You know, it's easy to, to um, allow all these adulterous, you know, false gods to proclaim. They proclaim, I mean, what they believe in every day, whether it's sports, whether it's celebrities, whether whatever they're talking about. But if we believe in God, then we should proclaim the name of Jesus openly, right? 
not in a way of boasting, but it's a way of, you know, I believe in Jesus. And maybe that's all you need to say to get someone to, you know, hear the truth, to be um, curious about the truth. And I didn't realize this until the Lord pressed out upon my heart. And, uh, and it convicted me. I realized I was, really, I was really ashamed of my faith. I was like, the Holy Spirit was just like, you don't, you don't talk about Jesus as much as you talk about him at home in the public, wherever you're at. And God is calling us to be his people, to proclaim his name, you know? And are we willing? Are you willing? I, I, it's a test of my faith. I'm willing, you know? When people are talking about anything else, everything else, worldly things, politics, whatever, coronavirus, are we willing to say, you know, let's talk about Jesus. Let's talk about God. Or are we simply, even t- taking this step forward, willing to go, you know, praise Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh, God does, of the Bible doesn't want us to do that. He wants us to be meek. Yes, he does. We have to check our hearts first before we proclaim these things. But what I'm imposing is to say, Don't be different from the inside for what you present on the outside to certain people, to anyone. Love everyone the same. Treat everyone the same. Be a Jesus lover, not just inside your house, not just in your private life, but be a Jesus lover in, in your public life. You know, let's, let's, let's give it to God. Let's give the glory to God, you know. They say, oh, science created this, science this, or this, that. And we're like, no, that's praise the Lord for that beautiful cloud, so that's beautiful sunlight. Praise God. Amen. You don't even have to preach to them. You don't even have to defend your faith. You could just give God the glory where they're giving Satan the glory or not giving God the glory. You can simply just say, praise God for this rain. I don't know if you can see it on the video right now. It's raining. Um, you know? I'm not saying you have to go out in public and just be like, let's pray and make sure everyone hears you, you know, or say, God bless you to kind of spite people who don't know God. That's not good at all because that's coming right back to you. You know, so what I am saying is don't be, a, don't be afraid of your faith. Don't be afraid of uh, or ashamed of the name of Jesus in front of your non-believing friends, in front of your family or the society around us that proclaims Satan every day. Don't be afraid of it. Give God the glory. Just simple, simple things. You don't have to have a full debate about why you believe in God. You can simply just say, thank you, Jesus. Oh man, it's a nice day. In front of a bunch of non-believers. Thank you, Jesus. And they turn and they probably look at you and just go about your life, man. Just what I'm saying is, you know, don't be afraid when this world is afraid. I started doing this. I started to tell. I started to just kind of really be who I am in my private life, in in my public life. And really just started to be like, you know what? I'm just going to live for God. I'm going to just really let people know that I love Jesus and I don't care if they don't like me for it. You know, I'm not going to be ashamed of my faith anymore. Are you ashamed of your faith? Do you hide your faith? Do you not post Bible scriptures on your Facebook? Do you not like tell people about like your testimony and how God saved you? Because this is the big evidence if you are a believer or not, one of them. Are you afraid of the gospel? Are you afraid to post Bible verses? Are you afraid to show your face to the world and say, thank you, Jesus? Don't you want the intimacy 
with God, a closer intimacy with God. And God is saying, until you really, really stand up for me, as I stood up for you, forgave your sin, blessed your life, I don't want any part of you. You know, we stand up for many causes. And there's a lot of Christians who stand up for many causes. More than they stand up for the name of Jesus. Do you stand up for the name of Jesus? Can the first thing that people identify you with is being Jesus lover? And if it's not, that's a problem. Oh, who is this person? Well, they like this, 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 this. Oh, and they're a Christian. That, that needs to be at the top. Who is this person? They love Jesus. They're a Jesus freak. And, and, and we shouldn't get offended by that. We should rejoice. We should be like, yeah, praise God, you know? Yeah, I love God. Yeah, I love Jesus. Not to feel ashamed about it. We, there's so many Christians that hide their faith. You know, actually, what I've learned is there's a lot of Christians or Christians who say they're Christians, but no one would suspect they are. No one would suspect they love Jesus. No one would even know it. And I'm just like, are you serious? <laughs> there's, they're already here. And then that you think, you know, you're being a little courageous and you're posting about how you love God. And suddenly people start to kind of creep out and be like, oh, I love God too. And it's just like, okay, are you just saying that because you're following the majority of the crowd? Because a lot of people follow each other and believe in nonsensical things just because of the majority and they want to fit in. But Jesus says this, he says, in a parable, he says, how's it go? Um, many people, if the word was sown on many different soils, some rock, some soft, some weeds, all, and, and basically it, it's saying that, but because of the trials of this world, people fell away because they started getting persecuted for their faith. You don't have to be in a third world country to be persecuted for your faith. You can simply be in the United States. We are the, supposed to be the, one of the most blessed countries in the world. And we get persecuted every day for our faith. People try to make us feel bad for our faith. Oh, you believe in Jesus? Oh, you're a religious freak. People want you to feel bad and ashamed of what you believe in. I mean, people, here's one thing. If you believe in any of these false religions, people will encourage you. But the moment that you say you believe in Jesus, they'll be ashamed of you. But Jesus says, if you believe, you won't let that bother you because you will know the truth. I remember in multiple situations, I could talk about anything. I can even talk about politics. I could talk about anything. But the moment I start talking about Jesus, everyone freaks out. This is the world we live in. Our nation is supposed to be founded on the Bible, but nobody wants to talk about the Bible. Our morals, our, who we are, our identity, regardless of what this world says, the government says is legal. The God that we believe in is the truth. And we're supposed to proclaim him as the truth above all things. But we can't talk about him. We could talk about anything else, sports, this, that, marriage, all this, whatever. But the moment that we talk about Jesus, everyone closes their ears, closes their eyes, shuts their heart off. And they don't even realize it. They don't actually question their own life and say, okay, so everyone's following the crowd, following the majority. But what about these Christians over here? What about Jesus over there? What are they doing? 
what's why 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 are they living apart differently why are they so different than us and if you're not identified that way if if this world is not rejecting you and hating you then you're not in Christ you're in the world you're living like a heathen you're living you're not God's people if you're not being rejected by people and and God doesn't find any entertainment in that he's like they're not of me because my children act like me he said if they hated you if they hate me they will hate you you can't be friends with the people of this world and be friends with God. You have to choose one eventually. And I know that sounds harsh. It doesn't mean that you can't love these people. As Jesus loved us, he died for us before we knew him. He still loves us, but he doesn't approve of our lifestyle. So my challenge to you is, the only Old Testament, Moses had to hold up a staff and every time he dropped that staff, the armies that they were fighting against started to lose. And he had friends who started to come up behind him and started to hold his arm up. And he held his arm up for the whole day. Are you willing to hold up your faith? Many people have a bunch of causes, a bunch of things that they stand for. But this is a test of faith. Are you willing to stand up for the name of Jesus? Are you willing to proclaim the name of Jesus? Because I guarantee you, the moment that you start following Jesus and proclaiming his name, you'll start to have enemies like you never had before. People will start hating you. Everyone will start hating you. Be like, what is this? It's the truth. People proclaim any and every other reason. But the moment that you start preaching Jesus, start talking about Jesus, you're going to have enemies like you've never had before. And that's going to be a test of your faith. And many people can't handle it. They're like, oh, my gosh, this is terrible. And they, and they just go, you know, you, that's too much, man. I, I like my life in this world. I like my friends and my family and this stuff. And Jesus says one of the most amazing things. He says, he who loves father, daughter, mother, brother, sister, jaw, basically loves this world more than they love me is not worthy of me. I've had situations where the people I love the most in given this situation, I had to reject for the sake of Christ. Do you love God that much? Do you love Jesus that much? Do you know Jesus that much? Sometimes you're even going to have to reject your own passions, your own talents, your own everything for Christ. But are you willing to? That's what it means to be a Christian. To love Jesus above everything, above anything, including your spouse, including your friends, your family. To love God more than everything, anything. That's what it means to have and seek the kingdom of God. God first, Jesus first, and everything comes secondary, which means last. What's the most important thing in your life? Some of you guys will say, my kids. And biblically speaking, that's not the right answer. Jesus has to be the most important thing. I want my kids to know Jesus. I want them to love Jesus more than they love me or my wife or anything else. Do you desire that? And if you don't, you're not a Christian or you're not worthy to be a Christian. So stop pretending. If you love anything else more than you love God, who is Jesus, or you're not willing to compromise those things for him, you might as well just give up. Just let go. Don't even try. Because you're wasting your own time and you're wasting God's time.
You have to love God, love Jesus with everything. Put him first above all your choices. Those people who do that, they will enter into the kingdom of God. Now, here, let me break this down for you real quick. There's some of you who think that you're doing that. Well, I'm doing that. And I tell you, you're not doing that. You're, you're doing a bunch of Christian activities in your own eyes and in your own understanding. Jesus says, many will say to me on that last day, didn't we do this and this and this under your name and many my work, mighty works and cast out demons in your name? And Jesus says, I never knew you. Basically he's saying, you didn't do anything that I said. You did everything that you wanted to do. You misinterpreted my word. I'm standing over here saying, go over there and say hi to that person. Go over there and say, Jesus loves you. And you're over here reading the Bible saying, where does that say that in the Bible? Therefore, you're contradicting my spirit by your own reasoning of scripture. Don't be that person. I find myself in countless times being that person, but I have to humble myself and say, Lord, what do you want? And it's a hard, everyday, eternal process. That's what Jesus did. He didn't live for himself. He lived for God's purpose. He went to God as his scheduler in his life and say, God, what do you want today? What do you want today? What do you want today? Every moment, what do you want? What do you want in this situation? I will do it. I am your servant. I am here to serve your desires, your list of plans, not my own. And that's why there's so much division in the body of Christ. That's why there's so much division in our church and our faith, because people aren't following the spirit. They're following their own understanding of the spirit. But the spirit isn't just this idea. He's a person. And he's constantly trying to guide us and lead us. And we're and we're th we think we're smart. We're not. We're sheep. I don't care how much theology or knowledge or wisdom that you think you have or experience you think you have. God looks at you like a child, and He's right there, and He's like, "Follow me, and I will get you where you want to go and where you what you need." And people are standing over here being like, "No, I think I know how to interpret your word." And they can't even speak for themselves. Like children who are like two years old don't even have full words. They don't even understand a lot of things. Trying to understand the Bible is impossible for them unless they have a teacher. You have a teacher. He's the Holy Spirit. And if you don't have the teacher, then you don't have faith in Jesus. Because the teacher comes by faith in Christ. And if you think that you understand the Bible, I tell you, you don't. I don't even understand it. I only understand what I need to know when I need to know it. When I need to know it, I understand it. Open up the door. I understand that. Open up the door. Walk inside the door. I walk inside the room. Okay, what next? Go over there and do this. I only understand what I need to know. I don't understand the grand picture of things. And that's what it means to walk in communion and faith and fellowship with God and his spirit. You don't need to know. You just do whatever he tells you to do while you're going to do it. I don't know what this sermon was going to be about, but I know I was going to preach one. That's what it means to have faith. And over time... Revelation starts to happen. Oh, I understand now a little bit. But some of you guys, you think you need to know everything. And I tell you, you don't know nothing. The moment you think you know everything, you become a fool. In Proverbs, it says, a fool is wiser than 10 men. Are you smarter than everyone? If you think you're the chip on the block, man, 
then you are the God and the word of God. You've become the, the most foolish person ever. It says there's more hope than a fool than one who thinks that he's wise. I'm the smartest person here. No one understands me. They don't understand. It's like, wow. Now I, now I get it. I get it now. There's a lot of home Christians. Now I understand why there's a bunch of people who are like, I don't need a pastor. I don't need a leader to lead me. I can lead myself. I got a... I got my own Holy Spirit. The Spirit is trying to get you into your community. He's trying to get you into a church. He's trying to get you in the action. But you're too smart for your own good. You're so smart. You're smarter than yourself. I don't want to go. I don't want to go too far to this. But what I'm saying is, God loves the humble, and He will teach the humble His ways. He loves the humble. They come to him every day. What do you want, Lord? What do you want? Not my will, your will. I will do it. Forsake all your stuff. Okay. There's a process to get into that obedience. But eventually you get to the point where you just start to trust him because you know you can't even trust in yourself. You know that your thoughts are not even good. You can't trust in any of it. With the spirit that lives in you, he will point out every little thing that you're doing. And he'll tell you to repent. He'll tell you where to go. He'll guide you every step of the way. He don't want you chasing your own tail like a dog in circles, trying to count every little particle of dust in your front yard. He has a specific journey for you to travel onto. And he says, this is the destination that you're really designed for. This is the destination that I have for you. But it requires not knowing until you get there. You don't know until you get there. I need to understand before I step out. I tell you, you'll never step out. You need to step out. And as you walk it out, you're probably going to be walking in darkness for a while, basically not knowing for a while until you finally get there. Oh, snap. Whoa. So I test you. Step out in your faith. Step out and proclaim the name of Jesus. I don't know why I should do it. That's probably why. You make excuses so much, so many times in your life to do something. There's a thousand excuses for one task. Like you can't tell anyone anything these days. You can't tell them to do anything. They're so defiant, so reasoning everything. Like, can you pray for my friend? Sure. I just pray that, you know, God, that you would just help them or whatever. I don't understand just pray for them. It's simple as that. You can't even get people to do that. They sit there and be like, well, why? What's going on with them? Why this and why that? And, da, 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 da. and it's just like, it never ends. You know, can you go over there, open the door? Why do I got to go over there, open the door? And I tell you, God is not entertained with that. So I want to end in, and just challenge everyone today. Step out in your faith. The Holy Spirit will speak to you. And when he does... Do what he says. Just do it. You're not going to understand it. Just go over there to this person. It's going to be, he's not going to challenge you with something that's too hard for you. If you can't run a marathon, he's not going to say, I want you to run a marathon. No, he's going to say, I want you to just open the door and step out of your house. I know your faith is small, but just go open the door and step out of your house. I can do that. Yeah, do it. And then be like, oh, okay, grows your faith. Your faith, you can, I can go out of the door. I can get out of the house. Okay, now I want you to go to church. Ooh, go to the Bible study. Ooh, and this stretches your faith a little more, a little more. Okay, now I want you to do a sermon. And now I want you to go and say hi. Now I want you to pray for this person. Now I want you, and you get into this habit of trusting the spirit. And and God loves this. If you listen to him, he loves those who obey him. But he disproves and rejects those who reject him. I want you to say, God bless. It starts small. 
And then you have a little bit more faith and you go, wow, I, I can do that. I can proclaim the name of Jesus. I can do this. Is, yeah. Then he asks you to go a little bit higher, a little bit, a little bit more. Like a coach, like a father. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna do it. Then you do it. And you're like, whoa, yeah, I did it, God. And then you're happy. And then he's like, yeah. And it actually brings you fruit. Spiritual fruit. It nourishes you and it nourishes everyone around you. But Satan doesn't do that. Everything a part of Satan's will is to glorify himself. And everyone else suffers in that. But when you do something that God wants you to do, it glorifies not only you, it glorifies God and it glorifies creation and it glorifies everyone around you and it helps this world. If you want to see change, step out in faith. Trust God. You don't need to know. Actually, that's what God wants you to know. He, does, he wants you to not know because <laughs> that's where you're most useful. So stop questioning him. Just do it. Just believe in the Lord, in the Bible, the only Bible. Trust in the spirit. You don't need to know. And that's exactly where you need to be. Just trusting, trusting, trusting. I trust you. I don't know why I'm doing this. And that Jesus exemplified that perfectly when he died on that cross. Can you imagine? Go down there and get crucified. Serve all these people. Help them. And just to be like getting your foot nailed into a piece of wood. Being like crying out like, I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. Nail, getting your hands nailed in. I trust you. I trust you. That's how my battle feels in here in Battle Mountain. I'm out here being like, I trust you to come out in this place. Lord. And I'm just experiencing so much not in comparison to the crucifixion, but just experiencing the suffering here, being like, why am I here? And God's like, trust me. These people are so evil. They're so mean. They're so selfish. They're so rude and vile. They don't think about anyone but themselves. And God's like, just trust me. You're like Isaac on that altar while Abraham's just like, Killing off all the sinful things in your body. Killing off the things that are holding you back into more freedom. And maybe you don't know God. And this video is just for you to just be like, is this the God of the Bible? Well, I'll say this much. Read the Bible. Have the faith to open up the Bible. Read it for yourself. Pray to the God. Pray. Just simply, are you real? Is there only one God? Are you the God of the Bible that's that one true God? And he will show you whatever you need to know, whatever you need to satisfy whatever you're struggling with. My time's about up. It's getting really cold. Thank you for listening. Like I said, this is I didn't know this was coming out. But I'm going to keep doing these as a foundational thing. You know, we started this way. It's pretty easy. I just speak and let the spirit take it away. And, um, and just going from there. And then we build off of this, you know. This was a challenge for me. Just like, I want you to do sermons. Okay. Videos. Okay, for this long. And it started small. Really, really small. I was doing really small things and then it started to grow and then it started to grow and here we are and now it's still growing but i have the foundation and i'm just constantly working on the foundation and everything else is just growing off of that some of you guys you just overburden yourself with things you're like i need to do this i need to you never built a house before and you want to build um a 20-story building hmm You've never even built a gingerbread house before and you want to build the skyscraper. Okay, let's work on the gingerbread house first, okay? <laughs> first, you got to go to the store. <laughs> oh, I don't want to do that. It's too hard. But you're working on this majestic, <laughs> majestical, huge monument. Okay, start small and go from there. God bless.